Hey everybody, I'm Jed and this is Jed Makes Noise. And today we're making noise with some synthesizers and a drum machine sequencer. And we're going to have a jam in the style of EBM. Check it out. I've been making music for many years using these sorts of tools, synthesizers, sequences, drum machines. And this really goes hand in hand with some of my favorite genres, particularly the darker subgenres like cold wave, post-punk, industrial music. One of the darker electronic subgenres that I've grown to love is EBM. Now, EBM isn't to be confused with EDM. That relates more to modern day electronic dance music. EBM stands for electronic body music. And this term was coined in the early 80s for bands such as Skinny Puppy from Canada, Nietzsche Ebb from Britain, and Front 242 from Belgium. This type of music is characterized by hard pulsating four on the floor rhythms using drum machines, sequenced bass lines using sequences and synthesizers, and real brash, harsh lyrics that are screamed and shouted. I guess they're taking a lot of the punk sensibilities from punk music, but using sequences instead of guitars to get through that aggression and energy. So today, I'm going to talk through some of those production techniques, and then I'm going to have a bit of a jam. So let's make some EBM. All right, so firstly, the drums. Now, we've got a drum machine here. This is the Electron Analog 4. It's also a sequencer. Now, what that means is we can program drum sounds on it. We can program synth sounds on it as well. But what we're going to do is really use it as a drum machine today, and we're going to use it to trigger a clock for our other synth. But first, we need a four on the floor kick. Now, as you can see, I've got my kick drum on the first track, and it sounds like this. And if we go into step sequencer mode, you can see that I've got a kick on every quarter note, I guess. So pretty simple, four on the floor. I've got the snare doing a particular thing as well here. Now I like having that little variation at the end of every second bar that adds a really nice variation on the rhythm. On the third track, I've got some hi-hat. Now I'm using the envelope on this sound to open up to emulate a hi-hat opening. Now the key point with percussive elements like this and this other track that I've got going, which is a clap sound. What you're really trying to do is add some elements around the kick and the snare, make you shake your shoulders to make people move. You really need to use syncopation. So as you can see, I've got all these hi-hats and claps that are all in random places within the 16 grid sequence. And that's what makes what we call polyrhythms. And so what we're doing is we're creating syncopation, which is something that really causes people to move. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's move on to a bass line. So we're using the Roland SH-101 to make a bass line today. Now this is my favorite synth, I love it. What we're doing, we've got an external click in here. So instead of us having to perform the bass line ourselves, we can receive a clock from the Electron Analog 4 and then all we need to do is hit the play button. So let's talk about the actual bass sound. Now what I like to do, I always like to use this sub oscillator. It sounds great. Blend it in with this triangle. Sounds very characterful. And the square wave blended in sounds great as well. 
That's a beautiful SH-101 sound. Now notice my envelope is a very specific envelope uh, configuration. I've got not much attack at all because I want that bass note to really cut through. I've got a little bit of decay. And I've got a little bit of release here as well, just so it doesn't, just so the note doesn't disappear straight away. Envelope is your best friend when you're making techno and EBM and stuff like that because you want your sequenced elements to be nice, short and sharp and you can really achieve that with the decay and the release. Now onto the filter, you can see that I've got the frequency, this frequency knob here of the filter. On other synths, it's labeled cutoff. So you'll get used to seeing the word cutoff a lot. Now you can see that it's not opened up very far, but what I'm doing is I'm using this envelope slider to trigger the filter to really open up using the same elements as the envelope. So we've got not much of a sound here. And as we open it up, we've got that bright brassy sort of sort of sound on top of the bass. Now that's what gives our bass so much character. Notice I've increased the resonance. Now the resonance, the more you peak the resonance, the more you're gonna get a lot more techno sort of sounds like the sort of laser zap sounds. And when you're in the middle of a sequence and you just increase that, that's a really cool way to sort of organically change the timbre of the bass line. And notice I've also got the noise generator, this being the noise oscillator in the oscillator section. I've got the noise cranked up a little bit. And the idea behind that really, the noise is good to add to a bass line to sort of just make it just pop out a little bit more in a mix because you're adding this noisy clack to it. It sort of reminds me of the clackiness of a bass guitar's strings. So I love doing that as well. I've also got this bender wheel modded. So when I bend it all the way up, the filter opens up a lot and we go up a whole octave as well. So that's good for when we're playing along. You can suddenly jump a whole octave just on the fly and you can also really manipulate the bendy sort of glidey sound of this wheel. You can use this to activate the modulation LFO of the VCO, the voltage controlled oscillator. So when I push this forward, it kicks in a little bit more uh, LFO on the oscillator. So it'll be like, it'll add a lot of vibrato to the sound. So that's really good for when you're jamming out as well. And you want to add some variation. When I like to create an EBM bass line, I like to use a real dark scale. And messing around in the key of F, I found this sort of riff. So as you can hear, it's very dark. We're using real close intervals. And this is a technique used in a lot of EBM music because they're trying to get that real dark tone. Basically, in EBM, they're not really using any major scales. It's usually either minor scales or pentatonic scales, you know, very rock based scales. This type of scale, that type of tonality is actually a Phrygian dominant scale, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But the main thing is I've written a bass line. Now I need to sequence it. So, so the SH-101 is just receiving a little click. It's just receiving a signal that's going da 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 I need to hit load on the SH-101. 
And in any note that I play, I need to make sure I'm playing in rests as well. So this is how I would do that pattern. So now when I hit play and then hit play on the drum machine, it should be all synced up. When I was jamming out on this song, I thought this could really do with another synth line. And I basically just picked up the micro chord really because it was small and it was easy to grab at the time. But I made this little patch. I made this patch by tweaking another patch on the MicroKorg's patch bank. It's got a bit of a sync quality to it. And in EBM, you know, the, the cheesier the better, I say. Like, the cheesier the sounds, such as weird sort of synth sounds, a little bit of FM synthesis is really handy, such as Yamaha DX7 sounds. And we're also talking about sampler-based sounds, such as the EMU2 emulator or the Fairlight CMI. Now, I don't own those units because they are extremely expensive, but the microcorg was here. I found this little sound and I thought, you know, this sounds good on top of it. So the main point here is once you get your bass line going with a synth bass, it's really cool to drone over that bass line with another droney sort of synth. And so you want the main bass line to sit up right up the guts, right in the middle of the mix. And then this droney sort of thing to just sort of wash in sort of reverb and wash all around, but still add this real dark edge to the composition. And then I worked out that I could sort of jam out by playing octaves. <laughs> So, very dark, very mysterious. When I'm improvising a bit on this jam, you'll see that I'm using a very specific scale, which we talked about on the bass line. It's sort of like... Very kind of Middle Eastern sounding, or almost gypsy-like. Uh, I've used this shape in so many compositions and I didn't really know what it was, but what it actually is, is the Phrygian dominant scale. Now, I won't go through the music theory of it, but I really encourage you, if you want to know your scales and, and want to know how to bring a real different vibe, a different tonality to your compositions, check out your different modes and scales. Phrygian dominant, a very exotic sounding scale that I'd love to use, especially on EBM. And if you listen to a lot of EBM artists, you'll hear this scale used quite a lot as well. So I think it's ready for us to start jamming on this song. I'll see you on the other side.
Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing. And if you'd like to support me further, head on over to my Patreon page. That's patreon.com slash Jed Makes Noise. Thanks.